It is December the 18th of the year uh, 2014. Here is um, Macht und Menschenrechte, Power and Human Rights um, on uh, Jungle Drum Radio. My name is Volker Reusing. Today we have uh, the honor to speak with uh, the delegate of uh, the President of the Republic of Ecuador um, for the Nation Board um, of Finance and Monetary Aspects, Mr. Diego Alfredo Martinez Vinuesa. And we are talking about the Dinero Electronico. Good evening, um, Mr. Um, Martinez Vinuesa. Hello, and it's a pleasure to talk with you. Um, why shall the Dinero Electronico be introduced additionally to the US dollar? Well, uh, the reason is very simple. Is um, Let me start by telling you what is the electronic money, how we call it Dinero Electronico in, in Spanish. Well, uh, Electronic money is nothing more than a means of payment, that's all. It's similar to checks, it's similar to electronic transferences through the internet or the banking system. It's uh, the same like uh, uh, bills and coins and uh, debit cards. It's a means of payment and nothing more than means of payment. It is not a new coin, it is not uh, a new money for the Ecuadorian economy. Why are we doing this? It is very simple. We are doing this because we have three characteristics in our economy. The first one is that we spend a lot of money and a lot of time changing dollars because they deteriorate with, with the use of, it, of the bills. So we send at least one, three times a year an enormous amount of money to the US, to the Federal Reserve Bank, to change old banknotes from for new banknotes. That's very simple. And that's also a cost for the Central Bank of Ecuador. The second aspect is that we have an enormous amount of our population that is not in the financial system. I mean, they don't have a bank account. We account of uh, about 40% of our labor population that doesn't have a bank account, so they are not formally uh, included in the finance uh, in the finance uh, circuit of the economy and the third thing is that all these uh, means of payment these new means of payments are becoming more and more popular in the whole world there are many countries where uh, electronic devices are being used as means of payment in different in different uh, monetary units but the main difference in the Ecuadorian economy is that since we are dollarized, we never wanted a private business to run this, uh, this aspect because electronic money in most of the countries of the world is a private business. So since we are dollarized, it is very risky to leave it in the private hands because we need a monetary authority to take care of the amount of dollars that are in the economy and to take care that people uh, is not uh, affected with a with a false money, with a false coin, and with with many other things that can harm our economy. Um, and uh, how shall new dineros electronicos uh, be created, and by which a booking entry? Well, it will be very simple. There is no other way to get electronic money than changing it with physical dollars. So the only way that a, then a, in, in which a person can get electronic money is to is to give money, bills, dollar bills, to a transaction point. I mean, it, it can be a, a drugstore, it can be a grocery store, it can be a supermarket, and so on. So the only way is that a person gives their money and in that transaction point they charge the money into the form of electronic money so there is no creation of money it's only a way to put the physical bills in an electronic device as simple as that and since it is a from a voluntary use it is a voluntary use 
So people can change from electronic money to bills, to banknotes, and the other way around. So there is no way to create money in this sense. There is no money printing. There is no electronic money creation from nothing. The only way to get electronic, electronic money is from dollars. And as long as people want to use it, and as long as people don't want to use it, there will be the amount of electronic money in the economy. Shall uh, all uh, geo accounts uh, at Ecuador be changed uh, from dollar to um, the dinero electronico? No, because our new uh, monetary legislation, which was passed uh, in, in last uh, September, it, is, it, it mentions very specifically that the unit, the account unit in the economy is the US dollar. There is nothing more than U.S. dollars in the Ecuadorian economy. The only difference is that we are putting a new means of payment. I remember that uh, 15 years ago, there was no electronic transferences in the Ecuadorian uh, financial system. All was done in a, different, in a different way. And last year was the first year in which checks were not the first means of payment in the Ecuadorian economy. Last year was the first year in which electronic transferences were the first means of payment in our economy. So what we are doing is just putting a new way to, to do transactions, monetary transactions for the population. So the accounts in the economy, and the law says this in a very, very specific way, all the accounts in the economy are measured in U.S. dollars. Um, what does it mean that uh, the dinero electronico in, um, is not uh, regarded or is not a deposit? It, well, it is not a deposit. It is not a deposit since it is like like the bills and the coins that you have in uh, on the streets. So the only way to get uh, electronic money as a deposit is when you put it into a bank account, and when you put it into a bank account, it will be dollars. That's very simple. So it's uh, it's like you don't have deposits in checks. You have deposits in your monetary unit. For instance, in, in, in Europe, in euros, in the US, in dollars. You, you cannot have a, a, a deposit into a means of payment. You have a deposit into, a mon into money. And in this case in Ecuador, when you put electronic money in the bank account, you get dollars. You get nothing more and nothing else than dollars. Um, um, is uh, the dinero electronico then a means uh, to have um, the um, electronic uh, transfer of real money under Ecuadorian law? Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Yes, yes. Is um, uh, the dinero electronico uh, then also uh, a means uh, to make sure that um, the law um, on uh, tr uh, how to transfer um, real money in Ecuador is under the law, uh, is an Ecuadorian law, not a U.S. law. Well, that's not a problem, Sims. We were very careful when we, uh, when we passed the last uh, law in last September because we are well aware that we cannot print dollars, of course. It's impossible because that's, that can only be done by the Federal Reserve in the U.S. We cannot print dollars. The only thing that we can do is to, to provide to the population new means of payment that can ease their, their transactions. And that's why our law says very specifically that all the accounts in the economy, the accounting, all debts, all transactions are done in U.S. dollars only. There is no way to do any economic transactions in, not in any other thing that, that is not dollars. The second thing is that the use of electronic money is, total, is totally based in a voluntary basis. If people don't want to use it, they will not use it. The state and the government cannot oblige the people, cannot punish the people because they don't want electronic money. The electronic money will only be used as people want it. If people don't want it, they, it will be not used. 
The third thing is that electronic money can be changed with no cost at any moment. So if you have electronic money in your phone, you can go to a transaction point and with no cost, you can get bills from the electronic money that you have in your phone. So uh, that is a way that you can, um, that makes, um, that can make you sure that uh, the electronic money will not be used to finance uh, the government budget because that's one of the, the things that uh, some uh, analysts are saying but it cannot be used to do that because the, the law says that the government cannot oblige the people to receive electronic money from the government. That is not possible. And in the case that if the government uh, pays something with, with, uh, with electronic money, at that same time, the people can go to a transaction point and transform the electronic money into dollar bills. As simple as that. So there is no way to to force the use of electronic money as a substitute to the U.S. dollars, because that's that's an aspect of confidence. If people don't feel confident with the electronic money, they will not use it. Um, so also, if, for example, social benefits are paid in elect, uh, dinero electronico, it's only um, for as a means. Of payment and um, uh, to make uh, the use of the money easier, also for people who receive uh, social benefits, but they can get dollars from it. Yeah, exactly. You 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 said what was going to happen if uh, the state pays a social benefit. I mean, um, we can we can talk about anything. I mean, for instance, the the um, human development. Uh, uh, that we, we pay for the people, which is fifty fifty dollars uh, each uh, each month, to the poor people. Immediately, they can go to a transaction point and get bills, dollar bills. So that will be useless for the government to enforce the use of electronic money as the as a substitute to the U.S. dollars. It will be entirely useless because of that voluntary basis use. Of the electronic money, and the third uh, and the fourth thing that we can say is that it is forbidden for the central bank to buy a government uh, treasury bonds from the our Ministry of Finance and to give the Ministry of Finance electronic money. There is no way; it is not allowed in the law to buy government bonds and to pay them to the Ministry of Finance in electronic money. So, electronic money will not be used to fund the budget deficit. It is not the intention and it is not allowed in the in the legal framework that we passed uh, three or four months ago. It's uh, only to, to ease payments, uh, be it social benefits, be it, uh, be it uh, trade uh, transactions. Um, um, what does it uh, mean uh, for uh, for the ec economy? Does it uh, is it also a means uh, to uh, for economical growth? Well, it, it's a very important question because what we see now is that the use of uh, electronic devices and the use of electronic transactions and through the internet, for instance, uh, through our our formal uh, financial system is increasing a lot. So what we want to do is to increase the amount of the, the velocity of the, of, the, of, of the dollars in the Ecuadorian economy. We are well aware that the main constriction to the and the main restriction to the Ecuadorian economy dollarization system is the amount of dollars getting into the economy against the amount of dollars getting out of the economy. As long as we get a net inflow of dollars, our dollarization system will be a, a healthy system. So what we want to do with the electronic money is to ease transactions for the people. There is a very common problem that our population faces on a daily basis, and it is that they don't have uh, fractionary money. They don't have uh, an, uh, the, the enough amount of coins. And uh, many, many, many times when you go to a grocery store, for instance, and the price of some of, of, a, of, a, of candy is uh, five cents, and if you only have 50 cents, 
there is an enormous problem of people getting uh, fractionary money, fractionary coins to, to do the transaction. With electronic money, that problem will not, will not exist because you can pay the exact amount of the candy that you are buying, just to put an example. So that will ease a lot of the transactions in the economy. And, and the main difference between what we are doing now in Ecuador and what uh, the electronic money is being used in other countries is that in Ecuador it will be it will have it will be supported by the central bank. So there is no chance for the people to get uh, involved in uh, in something with no support and there will not be the possibility for the people to to be to be to tell the people lies in this sense because what happens in many other countries for instance with cryptographic money i mean for instance bitcoin and many other things is that cryptographic money does is not uh, doesn't have the, the the support of any monetary institution nobody is behind it so it can be very risky for the population. Here in Ecuador, we have not forbidden, for instance, um, Bitcoin. If Ecuadorians want to use it, they can use it. It is not forbidden. But they do it at their own risk because there is no financial institution, there is no central bank behind it backing up it. The difference with the electronic money is that it is entirely backed with your own money and it is entirely backed with the central by the central bank and there is no way to get electronic money on a on a, on a larger pr proportion of the amount of total money than the amount of dollars that you have in the economy and uh, there is an uh, additional thing that i would like to mention is that the use of electronic money will not only ease transactions but it will be safer for the population because it will be a very low cost uh, transaction it will be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can not, you will not have to to make a, an enormous amount of, of rows to in the banking institutions to pay for the public services and all, and so on. You can do it directly from your phone. It will be it will use uh, an, an enormous um, enormous amount of security for the system to not be vulnerable, and and so on. So. Uh, I hope that the the system will get a little bit um, uh, will not be used at the very beginning by for many people, especially because uh, all the people that have a bank account will continue using the bank account and the internet transactions and so on. But in the cities which are not the biggest cities in the country, in the smaller cities of the country, there is an enormous necessity of uh, technology and uh, our population is also changing because uh, there is a demographic phenomena in our country and it is that our younger people is getting is, is the largest part of our population and they are very very familiar with the use of cell phones and smartphones and so on so they will be very happy with all of these means of payment and um can people also, if they have a zero account um, at a um, at a private bank, for example, can they change to the central bank and have their zero account there? Yes, of course, you can do that transaction also, and that's very important. And that is why there is no new money, there is no substitute for the U.S. dollar, because if you want to send your the, the money that you have in your cell phone. To, the, to your bank account, you can do it. And you can also send money from your bank account to your account in your cell phone. So it is like having a wallet, as simple as that. You can deposit it in the bank and you can withdraw the money from the bank. It's exactly the same and they are all dollars. And it, it's uh, the account at the um, central bank is also uh, like a real account at another uh, bank can use it this way. Yes, of course, you can use it to make payments, you can use it to withdraw money, and the only difference is that you cannot save 
money in the bank account of uh, in, of your electronic money because it is as a wallet and they don't pay we don't we are not paying interests on the on the amount of money that you have in the uh, in your cell phone um do you reach with the new system also remote areas of the country of course the coverage of our cell phone companies is almost 95% of uh, our country uh, uh, meanwhile the coverage of our financial system is less than 60 percent so that's the main difference and that's the the main reason why we are doing this and the third thing that um, I would like to, to come back to uh, to a criteria there that I mentioned at the very beginning of this interview and is that we are doing this now from the government because in many other countries these things are done by the private sector why are we doing this from the government because we don't want to have a high cost means of payment that's the first reason the second one is that we don't have interconnection problems because in many countries you have electronic money of many brands each uh, each uh, cell company each cell phone company have its own has its own money so you have uh, electronic money from many colors and that's a problem because there is an inter interconnection problem it is, there is, there you have very high cost from interconnecting money from that one company to the money to the other company and we don't want it to happen in our economy because uh, of course we are a developing country we need a means of payment which can be very cheap and very very easy to use for the people and we want to be it I, we want it to be backed by a monetary institution so that can that people can can feel confident with the use of this new means of payment and, uh, when um, has uh, it practically uh, started the dinero electronico or when will it be uh, when will it uh, start well we did a pilot during last november and the beginning of this december we in during this pilot uh, we 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 can we, we saw that there are no technological problems that the platform the technological platform is working very good very well and uh, basically what we are doing now is preparing the launch of the um, of the system which will be done during the last week this december from December to January, people can open their accounts of electronic money, which is nothing more than register their cell phones in the central bank. And that will be done from December to the end of January. And then at the beginning of February, transactions will be done with electronic money. So that was our schedule, I, I can say it again, during the last week of December and then in January we will start the opening of accounts of electronic money. We, that will be a, an, uh, a zero cost process that will not require people to go somewhere to, to, to give papers and, and so on and documents, no, that will be entirely done from your cell phone. You can do it at your home at any time. At any time in the day and that will be done from the last week of December to the last week of January and then in February we will start the transaction system and um, can it be used uh, only by people whose uh, residence is at Ecuador or also for example by uh, Ecuadorian people who live and work in other countries well it can all it can only be used in Ecuador you cannot use Ecuadorian electronic money abroad so well there are many foreigners that live here in Ecuador they can also use electronic money but it will function only within the Ecuadorian borders it is not uh, possible to use electronic money for international transactions um, many thanks for, for this very a good overview over the new dinero electronico well no thanks thanks to you it, it is always a pleasure to talk with people which has interest on, in these things and any anything you need in the near future to to 
to talk about this, well, just feel free to contact us, and we'll, we will be very happy to give the explanations that, uh, that you require. And it is a pleasure to have talked to you the, today. Many thanks. Thank you very much.